In 2015, a cyber attack in the Ukraine took down part of the grid. Thousands of people lost power for several hours. Like that cyber event, hackers often try to access and control field equipment and operational technologies by compromising corporate business systems. Investment and research in next-generation cybersecurity technologies at Pacific Northwest National Laboratory can foil similar attacks at multiple stages. Proactive Adaptive Cybersecurity for Control, or PACIFIC, is a new approach for protecting control systems in operational technology settings. Securing systems that connect to and operate critical infrastructure, such as the power grid, municipal water delivery, and industrial automation is vital to national security. PNNL's approach is to bridge siloed information technology and operational technology to deliver better situational awareness and countermeasures to protect these large, complex systems. Within the PNNL PowerNet testbed, the lab has demonstrated, for the first time, that operational technologies can be secured by next-generation cyber protection systems that are proactive, flexible, and dynamic. Let's say we have a high-value strategic campus that's connected to the power grid, but operates its own microgrid with a generator. The campus is operating normally, but a malicious hacker wants to disrupt operations by cutting power to critical facilities. Take a look at what happens without Pacific cybersecurity measures. As in the Ukraine, attackers try to exploit basic business systems, like email, in order to get credentials to pivot to operational technologies. Our attacker crafts a phishing email to a specific employee named Mike Mars, who is a substation engineer. The goal is to get the victim to download this manual, but it's a ploy to create a remote shell and enter the network. Then the hacker can inject malware or bad data into communications between critical systems. As the corporate victim opens the attached engineering manual from the phishing email, he unwittingly provides the attacker with access to the engineer's corporate workstation, which has VPN access to the substation equipment. Pivoting through VPN, the attacker can access devices on the campus substation, like this relay. He opens the relay's breaker and successfully disengages the campus from the larger grid, as we can see on our operator view and grid view. The red breaker icon indicates the campus has now been islanded, but it is still operating as a microgrid powered by a backup generator. This is indicated by a green breaker in the grid view. Systems and devices like the simulated air handler are still operating. But now, the attack moves to phase two, accessing building control equipment in order to cause a complete power failure on campus. Joe Schmo is a building manager for the campus. Our attacker already has access to a corporate account from the first phishing email to Mike Mars. This enables an even more convincing phishing email. Joe gets the email, supposedly from his colleague Mike. Believing the message to be genuine, he makes the mistake of enabling content and downloading a manual. Now our attacker has become Joe Schmo, using the victim's credentials to remote desktop into the building control system. This lateral access to the engineering workstation allows our adversary to choose the operational devices and systems he wants to attack in campus buildings. In this case, he accesses controllers that manage the air handling fans. Changing the speed to slow the fans causes a downward spike in power, which will cause the generator to trip off to protect itself. Now, the campus is completely without power. The attacker's objectives have been met. The outcome would be very different with Pacific, a suite of five synergistic technologies underpinned by the unified operating picture. It's an intelligent dashboard, and had it been engaged in our attack scenario, defenders would have been immediately alerted that the hacker was in their system.
UOP, flags deviations from anticipated system behavior. It also processes indicators from operational sensors to quickly ascertain the cause and execute appropriate response to a cyber event. UOP includes information from a proactive, machine learning-based approach to malware triage and analysis. It's called TIMBER, which stands for Threat Intelligence Model-Based Response. Part of Pacific, TIMBER systematically identifies cyber threat objectives and system vulnerabilities, then swiftly formulates countermeasures and mitigations specifically aligned to the threat profile. The UOP will show more TIMBER and other alerts as additional Pacific defenses are layered against the same attack. In this version of the attack, PNNL's Advanced Detection and Response Tool is engaged. It's a hardware device we call a symbiote because it physically attaches to a field-deployed device and provides a variety of sensor data. In this case, it's attached to the breaker device the attacker is attempting to open in order to disconnect the campus from the grid. With Mike Mars credentials, the attacker uses a remote desktop to access the breaker, opens it, and severs the campus from the outside grid. The patent-pending symbiote on the breaker device sends an alert to the big-picture view of the UOP. This lets defenders know the breaker has been accessed and settings have been changed. Normally, this is a situation that would lock operators out. They would be unable to change the settings remotely, and a fix would take time. Technicians would have to travel to the deployed devices to reset them. But the other benefit of the Symbiote physical asset is that it allows operators to reset field devices to the last known proper setting. This would restore connection to the grid or the backup generator with a click of a button. Now, let's go back to our scenario where the attacker has already gained access to the building controls. Timber has already alerted operators to a potential threat. To counter, operators deploy a specialized decoy technology. Patent-pending Shadow Figment is a unique, model-driven deception defense for control systems developed by PNNL. It uses multiple decoys to mimic controllers or devices in a network system. For instance, the air handling unit controller. Adversaries are sophisticated, but so is Shadow Figment. It looks very authentic and, more importantly, acts that way too, thanks to an algorithm developed through machine learning and a recurrent neural network. Existing IT-based decoys do not provide convincing data to deceive and hold attackers. Our algorithms enable the decoy to send realistic, operational signals back to the attacker, just as if he was controlling the unit. Shadow Figment decoys draw the attacker's attention and resources away from the real devices. Meanwhile, defenders are immediately tipped off to the intrusion, where the attack is located, and what the attacker is trying to do. All this provides defenders with a significant advantage over current cyber defenses. They can choose to take action immediately, or the decoys allow defenders to safely observe the attack. This allows defenders to learn and create a defense for similar future attacks. In the next attack scenario, Shadow Figment is deployed, along with another Pacific technology called Cyber Isolates. Cyber Isolates is a computing system and method designed to isolate or compartmentalize business processes across IT systems and networks. This prevents cyber threats from pivoting around defenses to critical OT systems. Our victims, Mike Mars and Joe Schmo, have already taken the bait on the phishing emails. But in this scenario, defenders want the attacker to interact with the Shadow Figment clones of the building control systems. Meanwhile, cyber isolates protect the systems. The attacker tries to identify devices using the BACnet Explorer tool. He thinks he's manipulating the device because of the data signals received from shadow figments. But with cyber isolates deployed, there is segregation between email business processes and operational control functions. 
Cyber isolates build smart, protective barriers around business processes and around various aspects of an employee's job, so it derails attacks without disrupting organizational efficiency. If an attacker sends a malicious email, it will open only in an area where there is limited availability. In the final attack scenario, with cyber isolates deployed, the attacker is stopped in his tracks. With each Pacific technology employed, the defenders are able to counter and stop an attack further upstream. Together, the Pacific technologies could lock out an adversary at the email phishing stage. If solutions like this had been available at the utilities attacked in the Ukraine, the lights would not have gone out. Adversaries can and will continue malicious assaults worldwide. New solutions are needed, and PNNL is defining secure design and development principles for these evolving threats. Proactive, adaptive, cybersecurity for control. Pacific technologies are available for licensing. Contact us to see how we can work together on your specific cyber challenges or to test and deploy these technologies in your operational technology ecosystem.